here we have an old iPod. What is this? iPod Touch 4 that came in for repair. Customer said the charger port is damaged and if we can increase storage space. We're not going to be able to increase storage, but we can fix the charge port. We've done this more than a couple of times on our channel. And disassembling this iPod is not an easy job. We have to desolder a couple of things on the board before we are able to remove the motherboard. And as you can tell, I still have the screen connected to the board right here. Let's take a look at the charging port and see what's going on. I did check the charging port before we disassembled it. Otherwise, I would not have disassembled it like this without checking the charging port first. And I did see damage on the charging port right here. You can tell there's a pin sticking out and going all the way down. And there's one in the middle also. So we're going to change the charging port and charging port replacement on this iPod is also not considered an easy job. A lot of pins to work with. Right here. Basically the port is soldered onto all those points that you see in the middle. All those points and soldered on to the legs. One here and one right here. Apply flux. The repair is expensive because of the amount of work it takes to disassemble, change the connector, and reassemble this iPod. But anybody fixing an iPod like this, they're not fixing it for the sake of having an iPod Touch 4 back in a working condition, but because of the files on the iPod. That's why people fix it. A lot of you still wonder, why is that person fixing an iPod Touch 4? Why? Is that person stupid? No, he's not stupid. He's doing it because he needs the files on the iPod. He's going to pay 2, 3, 4, 20 times the price of the iPod to get the files back. That's what you have to understand on all older devices. We do not fix old devices for the sake of fixing them. They're not vintage, they're not antique, and they're worth nothing. We fix them because of data. I would say 70% of the stuff that we fix here is because of data. And that goes for Nintendo Switches also. A Nintendo Switch is $299 if you want to buy one. We have customers that paid us $1,200 to fix their Nintendo Switch because of data. And the most important pads to apply Lomel solder onto are the legs, left and right. We should be able to easily remove the connector or the center pins with just a little bit of hot air. As you can see, the area is very tight and you can barely get the soldering iron in there. Let's apply some hot air. And the connector is out. And whatever stuff you see that melted here is nothing. Just an overfill or glue. Okay, so all the pins are inside the holes, and now we're going to have to flip the board to solder the legs. We can start with the legs, and then we can solder the pins in the center. We can see this plastic piece right here, the pin right here, and the same goes right over here. Just a tiny bit over here so we can secure that connector 
and then we'll take care of the rest. I need to add more solder on the tip. Very nice. And we can apply more solder right over here. Anti-glare light. Great. Very nice. We're going to need a lot of flux because any bridge on those holes is going to be hard to remove because of the tight space in between this and this. Right now I just want to secure the pins and then we can go over them in a second pass. I mean, I honestly could not tell you what would have happened if we did not have enough flux in this area. It would have been a Hiroshima for sure, no doubt. And we're done. We're all done. Awesome. All we have to do is reassemble and I'm going to have to solder the stuff that we desoldered at the beginning of the video. I did not do it on camera because I disassembled the board and then I started the video, but maybe we can resolder those strips back on the board together. Let me give this to Big Boss so he can put it inside the case, the housing, and I'll be back. All right, so we reassembled the motherboard inside the housing, not fully because we still need to do some work before we put the plate, screw it, seal the screen, and all that stuff. Let me show you what we did so far. So the motherboard is already secured inside the housing. Right now we need to solder this flux cable, the battery flux cable that goes right over here. Pre-apply solder on those three pads and then we need to solder that flux cable. And I already soldered this component down here. And we still need to solder this flux cable right here, one, two, three, four. And after we are done with the soldering, we need to connect the cable for the screen because right now we cannot fully open the screen if this connector is connected. The cable is very, very short. I do not know why Apple chose to make the cable of the screen extremely short. They could have made it maybe half an inch longer and that would have been perfect. But right now we need to disconnect the screen in order to lay it back so we can do the soldering. Let's pre-apply solder here. And we also need to pre-apply solder on the top here. Let's do it now, so we do not keep going back and forth with the soldering. Just like that. And maybe we can start with this flex right here. That flux is so thin and very fragile.
All right, then we're all good here. Get rid of the glare. And very nice. Great job. Now let's go down here and solder the battery flex cable right over here. And we're all good. Just put a piece of tape over the battery pads here. And we can do the same for this one here. And now we need to connect the screen right here. I'm not gonna be able to do it under the microscope, so let's do it here. Because the screen must be halfway closed in order to connect the FEC connector. And the microscope being on top, we're not gonna be able to see anything. I'll have to look at this from an angle. Okay, are we gonna see anything on the screen? Will the tablet or the iPod charge? Will it even power on? I have this old adapter that we can connect to a micro USB cable right here. I do see a charge. Yes, we do see the battery and I see a charging rate of 5 volts at 0 0.6 amps. Wow, done. Let me remove everything out of the way. And if I press on the power button, the screen went black again. And that's because the screen disconnected. Unbelievable how short that cable is. Let me connect the cable again. But the charging port is working and I did see the battery logo. Let me connect that screen cable again. Okay, so I connected the screen again. And let's plug the charging cable. And right there. The iPod is charging at 0 0.6 amps, amazing and we see the apple logo done fixed i'm gonna put this on big boss's bench so he can reassemble it and seal it tomorrow we'll invoice and mail this back to the customer that's it i hope you enjoyed this video let me know what you think leave it down in the comments don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll do something else in the next video